Canelo and Caleb Plant had a little scuffle at their kickoff press conference. And at the table, they exchanged some heated words, insults. I suspect that Caleb Plant being part of the PBC, and when I say Caleb Plant, I'm talking about him and the people around him have decided that they want to make Canelo feel like he's the outsider. Canelo's a free agent, of course. I'm sure Showtime, the network which is showing this fight, are absolutely over the moon about the fact that Canelo is back on their network. But the fighters, the network of trainers, managers, advisors, and so on, which inhabit the PBC, the PBC furniture, basically, I think that some of them are going to make a concerted effort to try and make Canelo feel as though he's in hostile territory because Canelo hasn't been in that position, i.e. in hostile territory, probably since the Mayweather fight. When he fought Mayweather, yes, he had a lot of fans, but Mayweather was still flying high and he obviously had a lot of clout in the game and it was certainly still the Mayweather show rather than the Canelo show. Shortly before that, of course, Canelo was still fighting on Mayweather's undercards. So that was the last time Canelo fought anybody where it basically wasn't his show. This is the atmosphere, I think, that some of the people in PBC, certainly Plant and the people around Plant, want to create. They want to see if they can unnerve Canelo, if they can take him out of his stride, if they can make him feel the same way he felt when he fought Mayweather. Because when people get into a certain routine, when they get familiar with certain surroundings, certain people, certain feelings, they get comfortable enough whereby they're in their groove and they can keep on churning out consistent performances. Think the clitch goes. That's where Canelo is right now. And in order to beat a guy like that, who's in such a groove, sometimes you need to shake him. Sometimes you need to do something to alter his psychological state where he starts acting out of character, where he starts thinking out of character, where he's no longer in his psychological, not just physical, but psychological comfort zone. I think that's what Plant and his people are attempting. Whether it works or not remains to be seen, but they have to try something. And it, of course, also shows how much they rate Canelo, how highly they rate Canelo, because if they were just fighting some regular Joe Schmo, they probably wouldn't go to this extent. Now, when I say the extent they went to, the face-off between Canelo and Caleb Plant was quite fiery by Canelo standards, and it resulted in Canelo shoving Caleb Plant. I'm not sure exactly what he was saying to Canelo, but he shoved Caleb Plant. Plant went flying. When Plant came back, he attempted to slap Canelo Alvarez. Canelo responded by striking Plant with uh, an open palm, with his right hand, and then he threw a left hook, which apparently cut Caleb Plant. I haven't seen the cut myself, but that's what other people are saying and telling me. And that's, of course, a very precarious situation right there, because if somebody gets a bad enough cut, that can jeopardize a fight. And you don't want that to happen. This is for the undisputed super middleweight world title. Has there ever been an undisputed world champion at super middleweight before? If there has, I can't remember because Chris Eubank was never undisputed, Nigel Benn was never undisputed, Roy Jones was never undisputed, Michael Nunn was never undisputed, Joe Calzaghe, was he undisputed? I don't think Joe Calzaghe was ever undisputed, was he? Or am I missing something? Am I misremembering? I don't think there's ever been, was Sven Otka undisputed? I don't think there's been an undisputed super middleweight champion before. Maybe one of you boffins out there can correct me in the comments. But either way, the stakes are high, big fight, undisputed, we're living in a world right now where fights are getting cancelled left, right, and center in a very random fashion. So you don't want to do anything to jeopardize a fight in this type of situation, especially in this type of situation. So very precarious there. The security got involved. Hopefully Plant's cut isn't so bad that they would have to push the fight back because he'd need time for the cut to heal, wouldn't be able to spar for a while, etc. So I think that for Team Plant, it's all hands on deck. They're pulling out all the stops. He's trying to be as confident as possible, and I'm sure he is naturally confident anyway. He spoke at a press conference about 
proving people wrong his whole life. And I'm sure they know that they are going to need to get every little advantage they can in order to beat Canelo, not just because Canelo is a fantastic fighter, but also because Canelo has a machine behind him, the type of machine which Caleb Plant probably doesn't have. Now, of course, he's a PBC guy, but he doesn't sell the kind of tickets that Canelo sells. He doesn't generate that kind of money. He doesn't generate that kind of viewership and so on. And as such, like I say, I think that Plant feels, or perhaps the people around him feel, that his confidence and his ability might not be enough. They're going to have to not only produce the best performance of Plant's career, but shake Canelo to such a degree that he underperforms, perhaps. Because that way, there can be no doubt. There can be no dodgy decisions, and so on. So that's my interpretation of what went down. It remains to be seen whether all this stuff works for Caleb Plant, whether it backfires, perhaps it will. Whatever the case may be, I look forward to seeing the fight for the undisputed world super middleweight title. May the best man win. I don't know if Canelo has a multi-fight deal with PBC Showtime. I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe one of you guys could fill me in in the comments below. If he doesn't, and he manages to beat Caleb Plant and then goes back to Eddie Hearn, that's going to be a real black eye for the PBC. A lot is riding on this for the PBC because if Caleb Plant wins, wow, what a boost for that organization. And let's say Caleb Plant doesn't win, but they have Canelo for, I don't know, two more fights. That's still a good consolation prize because even though they have people like Errol Spence, Deontay Wilder, the Charlo brothers, Manny Pacquiao was apparently just retired. They've also got Sean Porter, Keith Thurman, a number of other people. They don't have anyone on anywhere near the level of a Canelo Alvarez in terms of star power, okay? In terms of prestige, really. People talk about Errol Spence being up there and some people, I'm sure, mostly PBC cult members, would try and argue that Errol Spence is number one pound for pound or something. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there are going to be PBC guys who try and argue that. Well, if you look at resumes, Errol Spence's resume doesn't remotely compare to Canelo Alvarez's resume in the real world. Okay, so for them to have Canelo even just for three fights would be great for that organization. And if Caleb Plant manages to beat Canelo, wow. That is going to give them some mileage and they will hype that guy and perhaps he'll be able to become a star. You know, we'll see what happens. Like I say, may the best man win. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What was your interpretation of what went down at that press conference and how do you feel the fight is going to go? Come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide range of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly, it's not politically correct, but that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&A sessions, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalogue of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got a Discord server where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. There's no contract, no commitment, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.